So back in our demo, in our vacation packages, you can see we clicked on each button and it gives us a price. But all the vacations always have the same price. How might we give them different prices? Well, here's one way we could do it. Here's our HTML. And we're going to specify the price by adding a data price attribute to the HTML. The data tag is an HTML5 attribute you can add to any of your elements to provide additional information about the objects on your page. To interact with these attributes, we can call data, then specify a name to get out the information, and we can also set these attributes by providing a name and a value. Here's an example of reading out that data. We can fetch the nodes with the vacation class from the DOM, get the first one of those, then call data and specify the price name, and that would return the price that we see here, $399.99. Now let's go back to our old code and refactor it to use this data price attribute. To do this, we're going to start with a button that was clicked, which is represented here by this. We're going to find the closest ancestor, which has the dot vacation class. And then finally, call the data method to get the price value out of the DOM. We can then use that amount when we construct our paragraph DOM node, which shows the price, like so. Let's take these two lines and put them inside of our code. So each vacation now will have its own price. However, there's some duplication that's going on here. You can see that we're fetching the vacation class here and then again down below. So let's eliminate this duplication. We can do this by creating a new variable called vacation, which, well, fetches the closest vacation. And then when we set the amount, we can simply call that variable dot data. And then when we append, we can, of course, use that variable again. Now, if we use this code inside of our function, no longer are we repeating ourselves, and we're only querying the DOM once for this element, which is going to make it a little bit faster. Now if we jump back into our browser, when we click Get Price, we see that each of our vacations has its own price. This works great, but what if we start adding different buttons to our web page? This click handler is going to be called for all of them. So we need to make this more specific. Well, we could use a CSS selector. We could say dot vacation button, so it's only going to listen for click events on buttons inside of our vacation class. But there's a better way to write this. We can simply fetch the nodes that have the vacation class and then call on. We want to listen for click events and then we'll specify which elements inside the vacation class we want to listen for. In this case, button elements. And then our third argument becomes our event handler function. This technique is called event delegation. We're only targeting buttons if it's inside a vacation class. So now if we jump back into our browser, our buttons still work. Sweet. But, oh, we've got some filters up there. On sale now and expiring soon. Let's make those filters work. Here's the HTML for the filters. They're inside of a div. They're buttons as well. So we want to make it so that when we click on sale now, it only shows on sale vacations. And when we click expiring, it only shows expiring vacations. So to do this, we're going to write two different event handlers for the buttons. And we'll highlight vacations with these traits. So here we are inside of our application.js. First, we're going to fetch the div with the filters ID. Then we're going to use event delegation to listen for click events for the on sale filter class. And inside of the event handler, we're going to first find all vacations that are on sale. And then we're going to add a class to these vacations so they highlight. Here's the DOM for our vacation list. You can see that some of them have two classes, vacation and on sale. And some of them just have one, being vacation. So how might we select the ones that are just on sale? Well, we can do this using a CSS selector. We could just do dot vacation dot on sale. However, let's do this using traversing. So we'll call dot vacation, and then we'll filter those vacations to return just the ones that have the on sale class. Let's move this code up into our function. 
And now the second step, we need to add a class onto these vacations. To add a class using jQuery, we can use the add class method. Similarly, we can use the remove class method to remove a class. So first we'll grab all of the vacations which have the class vacation and on sale, and we'll add the class of highlighted onto all of them. So let's move this back up into our code. And as we mentioned, filter finds the right vacations and add class adds the highlighted class to all of those vacations. We can do the same thing for our expiring filter, listening for clicks on that expiring filter button. Then when it's clicked, we will filter all the vacations which also have the expiring class and add the class of highlighted. Let's take a look at this in action. We click on two and we can see them highlighting, but well, everything's highlighted now. So if we continue to click the buttons, nothing more happens. So we need a way to unhighlight all of these vacations. One way we can do this is when a button is clicked, first thing we'll look for any highlighted classes and we'll remove that class of highlighted from them. So we're getting rid of all highlighted classes from our page before we then go and add highlighted back to the proper vacations. So here we go, back on the page, and now when we click through our on sale and expiring now vacations, the proper ones are highlighted. You've reached the end of level three. Time to go to the challenges, and I'll see you in level four.